fantastic. This is GT racing right now. He's got tracks and he's got rid of the outside of Oh, he's taking Anderson. Anderson's up the wall. Oh, my God. crash. Oh, my goodness. Half the field's going to get rolled. Second very close. These guys are one I want to make their way through the field very quickly. This is it! This is over! I can't believe this! Oh my oh god! My god, what? Some magic happens when it comes to these vehicles around these circuits in this simulation. This is probably one of the most competitive battling fields that you will see time and time again. And once more, it comes to us on the Irising Esports Network. Once more, it comes to us here with SimSpeed TV's presentation. Once more, it comes to us for what is going to be your fantastic Monday Night V8 Australian Time Split Series here of course, live and uninterrupted at Circuit Gilles Villeneuve to start off the season. Qualifying is currently underway. 20 vehicles looking to take themselves to the start of proceedings here today. They've only got two laps to get qualifying done. It's Shakespeare here in the commentary box. Joined with Cam Dance alongside me for this one. And Cam, you have to talk about how very important qualifying is. They've got to get the tyres up to temp, but they've only got two laps. So that second lap, becomes the big lap everyone tries to get correct. Yes, yeah, certainly. It's very limited time in this official series. So it's all about maximizing the tire team that you've got and just putting it the power to the ground. So yeah, it's one of the higher pressure situations for these drivers who are used to probably turning about a thousand laps or so in pre-qualifying in V8 Scops, for example. So yeah, be interesting to see who ends up putting it at the top. But at the moment, it's Harley Haver sitting up there. And sitting up there by a good two and a half tenths of a second, if not three tenths of a second at this point in time. Let's get a championship standings from what was last season up on your screen very, very quickly, ladies and gentlemen. It was James Scott who picked up the title going back to back uh, with everything that he was able to do. He wears the number one. He has the highest eye rating in this field. He's currently fifth at the moment in qualifying and there's no guarantees he'll pick up the victory here today. Certainly not. There's a number of quick drivers out here tonight. Harley Haber, Adam Briggs, Brady Myers, himself, James Scott, Wayne Burke. number of quick oh, drivers who could be well within a shot. And Briggs even to the top. So just goes to show there's Ryan. plenty of time. Sullivan. Ryan O'Sullivan, out of nowhere, finds the top of the timing stand. 134.1. Brilliant job overall. And Harley Haber will not improve. On his times. Brady Myers might. He's in sixth position in the Altus Esports car. Wayne Burke to the top. He tied on times with Ryan O'Sullivan. That's how close it is at the moment at the top. The top two drivers are split by nothing. Absolutely nothing. Here comes Brady Myers then. Over to the line. He will try and go. 134 2. It's sixth place only. And Haber and Freer as well. They're also tied on times. Here's Mitchell McLeod. He goes 17th on a 35 flat. More times will come in. Likes of Ashley Ruskin, Thomas Hins coming in to try and get their times in. But my goodness me, this has been a magical qualifying. It certainly has. And it's the start of the season that you want with competition as tight as that. You cannot beat that. That is unbelievably close. But I'm going to be fairly confident we're going to be in for a good race with times like that because that is unbelievable certainly is. Janssen won't be able to set a time. Yuan Lin looking to try and get one. He's in 22nd at the moment. Brian Borg on his first lap. He will only be able to get one lap in because once time expires, you will not be able to set an extra lap on top of that. So he's at a disadvantage. Here's Yuan Lin first though, uh, looking to go up from 30, uh, 26 positions on a 138.7 and he does a 36.6 so he improves time but not position. Brian Borg Moves to 20th position overall, which is okay for him. So he will try and make up those positions in the race. In terms of people who are on a lap, nobody else is on a representative flying lap here today. So this is how the grid is going to stack then for your first round of the championship here at Circuit Gilles Villeneuve. So we'll see how that one all plays out. Hanlon's lap already completed. He's on his third lap, apparently. So he will not go 
any faster. So Wayne Burke will tie on times with Ryan O'Sullivan on pole position. 134.158. We have to go to the fourth decimal place to work out who's fastest and who's not. Adam Briggs starts this one from third with Harley Haber in fourth. He's tied on times with Tom Freer, who starts from fifth in the Pursuit Sim Racing number 19. Brady Myers will start from sixth with Jordan Ross number seven in seventh. Sean Thompson, good qualifying from him. He's in eighth. Champion from last season, James Scott. It's a not a bad qualifying, but in terms of being half a second back, it's only ninth place with Michael Taliancic alongside in 10th. And just outside the top 10, Steve Jensen and Craig Jones on row six. Scott O'Keefe and Thomas Sins on row seven, followed by Zach Hanlon and Kenneth Slater on row eight. Row nine, Kristen Smart and Mitchell McLeod. You'll see Mitch out there. And final row for row 10, it will be Brian Borg and Rob Bowden. It certainly will. Greg Sharp starts 21st in a very poor qualifying by Hobbo88. Brenton Hobson starts 22nd on the grid. Henri Michaela starts from 23rd with P. Lee alongside. Then it's Marco Nurmela in 25th. So two finished drivers there uh, in what is the lower half of the grid. Ashley Ruskin with Yuan Ji Lin. And the one driver who didn't set a time is Corey Preston, who is going to start this one from the back of the field in 28th position it's 25 laps here today so this is going to be a very challenging race for these drivers they know that this is a track where mistakes are not tolerated and every single move is going to be scrutinized to the nth degree cam how will these drivers deal with a very very narrow track yes, certainly it's more of a street circuit than an actual racing circuit like you'd typically find in the, the wider reaches but nevertheless we're not too far away from going green flag but yeah it's going to be interesting to see what happens at turn one especially with what happened last season of course last season harley haber and james scott both fighting for the title they came together here at turn one and two and that completely put a spanner in the works that allowed jared phil sell to win wayne burke the pole sitter ended up getting second position because of that so that's going to be very interesting swing for the last couple of drivers to get up onto the grid and one of them is the pole sitter number four wayne burke who we are waiting for he's got 25 seconds to get there of course track temp today 21 degrees it's cold which means that these tires are going to take a little longer to get up to temperature but the track race speed is going to be quicker these drivers will deal with oversteer more today than they will with understeer so we'll see how this goes up wayne burke gets up onto the grid in that one performance racing vehicle and now we can start the procedure here lights on on top of the i racing gantry let's get ourselves ready because the green flag drops and let's get going rhino sullivan gets a shocker though off the line wayne burke wasn't quite as good briggs trying to make a move hayman's got a stormer already trying to go to the outside here of turn one trying to get that move sorted but he locks up he goes too deep he's on the grass can he slow it up yes he can o'sullivan gives him a tap but i think that's move completed it is harley hayman leads Great move by Haver there to manage to somehow pull the car up, even after going off the road and put it into the lead of the race. So, fantastic start for Haber, but a shocking one from Ryan O'Sullivan. Just went oh, straight no. Big backwards. One. Big one in the back. Five, six, seven drivers, eight, nine drivers getting involved. That's with Michael Taliancic, Steve Janssen in there. You've got the likes of Craig Jones, Brian Borg. They've all been caught up. It was bottlenecking up at turn three. There's no safety cars here in this official series it all bottled up in the middle of the pack and getting a look at this going on it seemed like it was uh, the uh uh evolution racing team car there uh, of uh, what was going to be james scott who went around initially then tally Antich went around and then it all just funneled to the outside same way hamilton and vettel did yeah that did not there's end more too well and there's even more drama going on so it's not been that great of a start for a number of drivers no, it happens that Scott O'Keefe was one of them who got caught out in all of that. So this is a really big hell to scale to the field. Haber's away at the moment. Jordan Ross is seventh to second on the opening lap. Wayne Burke in third under pressure because Tom Freer is in fourth position and cannot quite get the move. So some dramas early on. There's the replay of exactly what happened off of the start. Brought to you by Motum Simulation. Back live. One lap. Scored complete. So Harley Haber leads this one and get this one lap getting himself in front. He's got three and a half seconds at the front of the field. Something had to have happened with Wayne Burke. Yeah, it certainly has not quite. He did. And then he's dead. Third chicane. It was third chicane. That's where it happened. So you had the likes of 
um, what was going to be issues for Wayne Burke. He got down the inside and there was contact down the inside. I think that was Adam Briggs who ran into Wayne Burke and he found himself into the arm coat. He missed his breaking point. That's why Haber now has a monumental lead at the moment at the front of the field. And very much, it's a case of who picked up places in the early goings. Marco Nermala from 25th is 12th. Corey Preston on the opening lap is 13th. Yeah, some big movers and shakers so far after this first lap, and especially the likes of Corey Preston, who's gone up 15 and nearly ended up in that big pile-up on that one as well. So he's done amazingly well to actually get through that and make up as many positions as he has. Well, it's positions on lap one, which can decide the race. You can't win it on lap one, but my goodness, you very much can lose it in these sorts of races. A lot of drivers looking at trying to make some moves. That was Ashley Ruskin trying to get past Brian Borg. That's not going to work. Slow down for Steve Janssen. Thank you, says Brian Borg. He'll pick up another position down the inside. Hobbo 88 gets the move done on a very wounded Greg Sharp. So there's another one for Hobbo to jump up the order. He can be happy with that move being scored completed. But there is a five car train at the moment here for second position. It stems from Jordan Ross, Wayne Burke, Tom Freer, Brady Myers, and Ryan O'Sullivan. And all of these drivers are hoping that a podium can be some good points to start the season. Yes, yeah, certainly. It's going to be all about just maintaining points and just getting as many as you possibly can over this course of the season. And especially with the likes of James Scott and a few title rivals also down the order at the moment with damage. So it'll be perfect opportunity. Wayne Burke's on the wall. Wow, straight away, Wayne Burke runs into troubles, and that's on the outside of turn four. He finds the wall, and I don't think he had any help with that. He got over the curb, and he slides it around, noses it into the wall. Two tyres up in the air, and very much like a dog cocking its hind leg, uh, he ends up not looking very pretty. Yeah, certainly, that was not too ideal. The car just gripped up off the curb, and then... From there, it was probably not really any good to him. So really unfortunate for Wayne there. And even more down the order now, he's dropped down to about roughly 15th or 14th. Sorry. So yeah, not been a great night so far for a number of tighter contenders. No, it's not been a good night for tighter contenders. Not one iota. So Wayne Burke already drops back. But good news about this series, Cam, is the fact that it has four drop rounds. So that means only best eight results count for a lot of drivers here today. Those best eight results, well, they are not going to be here today. Look at Ryan O'Sullivan and Brady Meyer. Oh. Side by side. Oh, they came together. Have they managed to pull it up nicely and all together? No, just big up over both curves goes Myers, and he'll lose a position to his teammate, Zach Hanlon. Yeah, not ideal there for Brady. They were actually bumping doors and panels just at the hairpin before, so not a lot of love lost between us, Sullivan and Myers, but not too ideal for Myers, so he'll have a bit of a recovery drive to get back those two positions. Well, he's already under pressure. There's the Ratu car of Thomas Hins. He started 14th, always up for a scrap. It's Hinsey as he thinks about maybe, can I get the inside? No, he cannot. Down at turn three, turn four, which has been a very difficult corner. It has proven over the course of the opening, three laps of this race to think all of this has happened cam and there's been only three laps that have gone on we've got other battles right now brenton hobson's found honorary michaela and michaela right now having to go defense but look in front of that wayne burke looking every which way to get past scott o'keefe both have run into troubles here today and both seemingly staying in position for now man wayne burke's obviously oh, carrying in the wall. Quite a bit. yeah Hobbit, what's happened there so he's looked for the oh, contact. inside and oh, he's gone for the outside and it seemed like uh, Michael was going to take the racing line and didn't see Hob Hobbo going on the outside. So Hobbo's found the fence. Yeah, it was just the smallest of touches as well. It wasn't a big gap or a big touch, but just enough to unsettle the front end and into the guardrail. So possibly got away with it with not too much bit damage, but that's going to hurt him in a straight line a little bit. Side by side. Side by side as uh, Corey Preston and Rob Bowden going at it at the moment. You've also got Thomas Hins and Brady Myers going at it right now. But Preston trying to get ahead here. Rob Bowden gets better on the brakes. And Bowden very much comfortable making that move. James Scott will be trying to chase it down. He's chasing it down at the moment, Cam. At a rate of two seconds a lap right now. So he is probably one of the fastest men in the field and he's thinking well there are more points in the offing here all i've got to do is catch up i've got 20 laps of nigel mansell qualifying laps to go out there and do as best as i can certainly and he's going to be pushing extra extra hard to try and recover as best he can like you said 
but at the moment it's just going to be all about making sure you don't overdrive that car at all. No, exactly, and you are completely correct with that. You cannot afford to overdrive this vehicle. It is very easy to get wrong and waiting Burke someone who I believe has just got it wrong because there is a slow down penalty as he goes through uh, turn two, turn three. So uh, he drops back behind Henri Michela and there's another position he will have to try and pick up in the later stages of this race. Keep an eye on Harley Haber though for a moment. He lost three tenths to the Jordan Ross that last time by. The gap is 3.9 seconds now. I wonder if this is Harley either A, managing the race as part of that United team, which is managed by Jared Philsell and Jamie McKnight, or maybe it's a case here that Jordan Ross is finding a little bit more when it comes to that Pursuit Sim Racing vehicle. Yes, yeah, certainly. This is an interesting one. Sorry, not Pursuit. Think... That's my bad. Uh, synergy. synergy. <laughs> yeah, it's they look the same. No, it's interesting, Cam. Go on. Yeah, I was just going to say, it's rather interesting. It could be the case that he probably is saving tyres. I mean, what the people are looking for is Zach Hanlon's actually had a slowdown at the last chicane as well. Oh, he's got straight on. And it's four seconds, Cam, that you get a slowdown penalty at that section. Messed it up. Goes over the anti-cut curb. And uh, that's four seconds that you will never get back. Yes, yeah, certainly, and it's a painful slowdown to get as well. Probably one of the more painful ones to get, so yeah, not too ideal for Zach, but he'll definitely be pushing on to try and recover that lost time and positions. Yeah, he needs to as well because he's dropped behind Myers, he's dropped behind Hins, he's looking behind. There's Kenneth Latter up in eighth place at the moment, Christian Smart behind in ninth, and Marco Nermela, who started 25th, has suddenly now got a top 10 at this point in time. That just shows you uh, how quick he's been running at the moment. Someone we haven't talked about in this race in third place is Tom Freer in the 19. And he is keeping Jordan Ross honest at the uh, tune of 1.3 seconds behind. So 1.3 seconds back. That's not too bad at all from Freer, who has really come on leaps and bounds over the last three months. Certainly has. And he's matching Ross with pace as well. Just ever so slightly quicker that last time by, but he certainly managed to get some really, really good pace in recent times since he joined Pursuit Sim Racing. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what he can do in these laps and whether he's going to be able to catch Ross as Ross having a big moment over the curbs there. Yeah, you can see Jordan Ross is starting to really feel the pressure here as he went up over the curbs. The gap is back out to four seconds once more to the race leader, but there is, of course, a lot of time left in this race for positions to change up and down this order. And we have seen changes, especially in the lower half of the field because Brenton Hobson, a lap or two ago, got past Michael Taliancic as we look at uh, Nirmala, Christian Smart, Kenneth Latter at the moment. They're having uh, their little scraps out there on circuit. So we'll see how that one uh, plays into a factor as they go towards turn number five and six on the brakes they go. But again, Kenneth Latter in a good position, doesn't have to worry too much about that. It's not a position uh, for Christian Smart to lunge. He normally waits for the perfect time in that machine. Yes, certainly. And Christian will just need to set the pass up real nicely. And if he doesn't even want to, he just needs to save a bit of fuel and save those tires just so he can get a shorter pit stop and also help himself later in the run. And you can see both pushing so hard on the eggs, it's getting a little bit of oversteer as well. So they're really pushing hard, but also trying to conserve as much as they can. Yeah, and it's that conservation that's going to be so crucial here today because of that pit stop window. Look at the trade now behind Kenneth Latter because you've got Nirmala and Preston's there, Brian Borg trying to let Rob Bowden through and now James Scott is on the back of it too which is not going to make life very easy for all of these drivers as they go through. Christian Smart good in the toe but again not close enough to go out there to make that move to get that one more position which becomes so so crucial the way that this race is being run. So that one more position well, it might just be Corey Preston here because Marco Nermala all of a sudden finds himself within a couple of tents. Preston's going to play the patient game. He's not close enough to quite yet make the move in that Exto Gaming car. But there, of course, is strategy, that magic S word, which comes into play. Certainly, all with a 60% fuel restriction today. So they've all got to really oh, look, Hobo. as much fuel as they can. And Hobbo... Oh, having to defend hard here from Michael Taliancic and did so through that section. In fact, 
looking at Wayne Burke as well. I believe he's come down in and he's made his stop early. And in fact, he has. So Wayne Burke going for a huge undercut at the moment with damage as well. Feeling I've got a pit at the earliest available opportunity to get home on the one stop. Yes, certainly. He'll be wanting a lot of clean edges to try and help himself, to himself out and get some nice, good laps in instead of being stuck in traffic like he was just before. Yep, and that is going to be key for Wayne Burke in terms of how he is going to be running this one. Here's Corey Preston, though, in the 18, down the inside of uh, Marco Nermola. But look at that. Oh, power on the outside. The traction there. Nermola knows how to fight. And Corey Preston, he may not be from Australia and New Zealand, but you have to give him the respect. He does know how to race. He yeah, certainly does. And it was a well-executed move by Nermola to somehow get the power down just enough more than Preston did so great driving there and he's not far off the back of this train of Smart and Latter and Smart's actually dropped off a little bit from the back of Latter so possibly going to start falling into the club and here comes Brenton Hobson and Michael Talianchich as well here. Oh, Hobbo, let that one go because Talianchich was diving down into the lane. That would have been scary for Brenton Hobson, seeing the driver that you're fighting with just go uh, zooming on by and missing his braking point. Sometimes you do that, Cam. You use your other driver as the braking marker, and very much it can enter disaster, especially at this track where you're going flat out the pit lane. Certainly, it's one of those things where... In pit lane, you Look really Scott. Think, but it is Scott's making another move up the inside, so still on the charge and another position gain. Yeah, but he had a lot of contact to make it by Rob Bowden there. As two into one didn't quite merge, and that was a very, very comfortable move uh, come the end getting done. Here's a replay uh, up on screen brought to you by Motum Simulations. This is how James Scott did it opened up the power through the right which led to the left you can see he's later on the brakes it's two holdens against each other and they can see oh they just run into each other slightly and that's where all the pace gets taken away from rob bowden at the moment worth keeping an eye on tom freeze brought the gap down to jordan ross to seven tenths of a second right now out on circuit half a second now the gap comes down wayne burke is officially out of this race he's retired in pit lane but all of a sudden uh we've got to see look this behind right now as they are absolutely doing well three tenths now the gap as they head to turn one yes yeah, certainly um, maybe do think that ross is possibly struggling on his tires now a little bit as he doesn't quite seem to have the turn that he did earlier on but he does still seem to have those resin checks so it would be an interesting campaign for free to try and find a way past especially if the tyres on the rear of John Ross's car are still pretty strong. Well they are still strong and they will hope that uh, they aren't going to fight too much. It might just be the case that Jordan Ross might have to be the first to come down in on the stops. Haber did a 35-6, a 35-8 from Ross. Tom Freer was the fastest man of anybody that last time by. He did a 35-4 and will be happy with the fact that he's done that. Into the pits has come Brenton Hobson. He's decided it's his time. Come in, make a stop, maybe hope to get back out and salvage something in terms of I rating and safety rating here today because the fact that he is so far down the order with car number eight on his vehicle it is going to make life tough for him to gain anything in the normal measurable metrics that iRacing offers. Yes certainly he's got a long race ahead of him to try and gain anything back bearing in mind he did actually have to physically stop in that lap one oh, Scott. up the second chicane as Scott's getting more and more through the field. Yeah, he's just got by Corey Preston, and Preston actually had the line. I don't think that was an attempted move, but Preston just lit up the rears on entry. And here comes Tom Freer looking to make the move. He's tucked up underneath. He'll have to go the long way around to make this happen, so Jordan Ross will fight it all. And there was only just a door there, and look at the traffic there. Very good driving from Adam Briggs. He lets the second and third place drivers go before he gets himself up to speed so tom freer couldn't quite get it done this by uh, this time by but he is now losing a rate of half a second now every single lap to harley haber do you have to wonder if he's possibly going to come down to the lane this time by to get some new boots get some fuel and just get an undercut on the car of jordan ross but which one would first would be the interesting point and now smart's actually now back on the back end of kenneth letter he certainly is, and he'll be looking the gone road car to find a way through on the 
uh, Mark 1 eSports machine. Tom Freer again looking close. Look at this. Nose to nose. They headed into the third chicane as they look to battle maybe down at La Pangle. That might be the place to get the move done here in uh, Quebec, Canada. On the breaks they go. Look at this from Tom Freer. Gets a nose to the inside, but you can hold that outside line. And that's what uh, John Ross is doing. And he's got better traction off the exit there. Brilliant stuff. Kickspot move just like Numela made a few laps ago. So great driving by Ross. Smart through and so's a... Uh, yeah, smart through and so's uh, George, uh, James Scott as well at this point here, Cam. Yeah, what's happened there? I wonder if there's been a slowdown for the car of Kenneth Latter possibly, or he's had a moment he actually has out of the chicane. Oh, it was a huge slide, Cam. A huge slide coming out of the third chicane. And he's so well uh, done well to gather it up. Into the pits, then comes Latter. Follow. Look how aggressive on the lane uh, Marco Nervler is. He's alongside. Very late on the break, so I do wonder if he's possibly speed into the lane, mate. No, he's actually managed to pull it up as well, so amazingly late on the brakes by Nimmer. He's managed to pull it up, so really good driving there. Yeah, some great driving, and now it's a battle of pit crews for everyone as they look to try and get the fuel, the tyres, and back up to speed as quickly as they possibly can here. It does take a couple laps in new tyre model version 7 to get the tyres up to speed, so we'll see how that all plays out. Of course, Tom Freer. Still in that scrap with Jordan Ross at the moment, and things are looking pretty for those drivers at the front. Let's see then. Out of pits comes Kenneth Latter. Where's Rob Bowden uh, in all of this? That's going to be the key. Here's Rob Bowden now coming through turn one, and he hasn't gained anything from the undercut. In fact, he has lost a bit of time. Certainly has, and I do wonder if he's maybe just struggled a bit too much on those colder tyres from doing the undercut, but we'll see what happens in a lap or two time when likes of Numela and that. Scott again. Well, here comes Scott again down the inside of the pangle and he's got past Christian Smart without any worries at all. So James Scott is cutting through the field like a knife through butter at this point in time. And it is very clear at this moment what is happening still. Those in second and third stay out, but fourth place decides to come in. And how aggressive are you going to be? Ryan O'Sullivan, I think he slid it coming down into the lane. I think he may have been caught speeding. I'd say so, judging by the fact that he was 113k an hour at the line. So, wow. yeah, I'd probably say that's going to be a speeding in pit lane. And I don't know how he actually didn't make the wall because he was heading for it very quickly. Well, I know in Australia, they don't have, don't have to do breathalyzer tests anymore for going that fast in a speed zone that quickly. So, Ryan O'Sullivan, well, he'll get away with one thing, but he'll have to wait for another 15 seconds. And that is his race pretty much wrecked from what looked to be a surefire fourth. Yes, yeah, certainly is. Rob Bowden has got pressure now on the car of you, but unfortunately going to be pitting. So, another position for Bowden, but everybody else seems to be just minus student for the most part. Yep, they are at the moment. Out comes James Scott, who's just made a stop at this point in time. And uh, Christian Smart as well has actually leapfrogged him in the jump stop. So that was crucial. And Kenneth Latter is now behind Preston and Nirmala. So Kenneth Latter, who I believe also uh, didn't actually didn't come out of pit lane. Uh, he just ran very wide and then couldn't put the power down on the exit. He lost two positions for absolutely chump change. Yes, yeah, certainly did, and that's all it takes. It's just a small mistake, and O'Keefe has spun at the chicane, unfortunately. Just a little bit too much entry oversteer, and round he went, so fortunate for him. But that battle at the front beats in comes Ross. the car of Ross, and Myers is also in as well. Yep, so Jordan Ross in, Brady Myers in. That releases Tom Freer, and he will say thank goodness underneath his helmet because he knows he's got the ability to run away with things now for a little bit. Thomas Hins in, Zach Hanlon dives down in as well and you feel right now all this trouble oh. that happened two turned around james scott has got away with it christian smart mark and and that was corey preston just slightly missing his breaking point there as they came down in trying to slow it down the extra gaming car bump bump and they can see there's some perfect synchronized spinning there yeah not gonna be happy is kirsten smart or mark and for that matter it's not the most ideal situation and they've already pitted too so their tyres are going to be a little bit hot from sliding around like that. So they're going to have to give them a lap or two. But nevertheless, that's going to hurt Kristen Smart in a straight line, especially with that rear wing damage. 
it looked like a slow stop from Jordan Ross because on that last lap through in his box, I believe is just off the line, he was, compared to Brady Myers, 1.7 seconds slower. So I think Brady Myers has had a much better pit stop phase than what Jordan Ross has. And that could be a benefit for Tom Freer, who could very easily jump in the stop at this point in time. So we'll keep that in mind. There is a battle uh, going on that's not quite a lap down, I wouldn't have thought at this point. Adam Briggs by on Yuan Lin. I think that was for position, so uh, that's a lot further down. And here's a battle between our new tyres and old tyres. Thomas Hinn stuck behind Henri Michaela. Oh, Stop. wow! Hinzi goes sideways. Hinzi doesn't lose position yet. Yes, he will now on the exit, getting up to speed. Bye-bye goes Zach Hanlin, and also bye-bye goes James Scott. Another position for James Scott. Still carrying in comes on Hayden, through the field. So leading two then, dive down onto the lane at exactly the same time. That's going to be crucial then. Where is Jordan Ross in comparison? He's heading himself to the final chain right now at the moment as Hanlon, look at this uh, with James Scott, Scott's already through and trying to come back is Thomas Hinds oh no room, oh how are you going to battle this work it out boys, on the brakes as they go through, it seems that James Scott has got the line, he's got the way that he wants it made and that was very well worked, Haber out, no worries at all but somehow Jordan Ross stays ahead here of Tom Freer, it must have been a great stop for Brady Myers, he's now fighting for a podium yeah, and he's going to go in the stack. Hanlon's also made a move up the inside of Thomas Hens and nearly <laughs> takes James Scott with him as well. Oh, heart and mouth stuff there for Mr. Hanlon. Here comes Inzi down the inside of turn three. And oh, they're going to be panel to panel as they go through this section. That was a very well made move. No worries at all about that one. That was comfortably done. And now Kenneth Latter is on the back here of Zach Hanlon, who's looking one direction here at the moment. Cameron, that's backwards. Certainly, he nearly put it in the guardrail there at the corner beforehand, but he's really struggling at the moment with the tyres that he's got on, so Ladder's possibly going to make him move here in a lap or so. Well, here comes Brady Myers as well. He's looking for the podium. Remember, three his tyres are cold. He needs them up to temperature. Here's the look down at the inside at Lapangle. Door left very wide open, but using the outside track. Here comes Freer. Oh, he gets him a tap as well on the exit. The torque oversteer came into play there, but he holds the position. Brady will remember that. Yeah, he certainly will. He'll be definitely remembering that for next time when he goes on by. But looking at the lap um, pit stop time difference between Ross and Freer, there's actually not a lot in it. There's 0.1 of a second, so absolutely nothing in it. So it's amazing that John Ross somehow came out in front. Undercut. He got the tyres up to temperature a lot better and he was able to use them to advantage. So no worries at all. Harley Haber leads, but his lead is reduced now to 3.2 seconds at the front of the field. Jordan Ross is very good on fresh tyres at the moment. It is Tom Freer, third ahead of Brady Myers and James Scott, mind you, who was involved in that lap one carnage, has got his Evolution Racing Team car back into fifth place. Yeah, certainly a great recovery drive by James Scott to get back into a top five position for the time being. But whether he's going to be able to catch the likes of Brady and Tom Free is another question. Although if those two come together, you'll definitely be relishing at that. Certainly would do at the moment. Freer pretty much driving well within his limits at the moment into the third chicane. They come along and no real worries about this one there as he has definitely got the tyres back up into an operating window that he can use to his advantage the later that this race goes on. Michael Talianch and Brenton Hobson, both of them have stayed together throughout the majority of this one. They're 13th and 14th and Talianch is starting to pull away ever so slightly. Yeah, slightly quicker that last time by Talianch by about a tenth of a second. So I'd say Talianch is probably going to pull away from Hobson here, but probably doing a pretty all right job of recovering at this stage. Yeah, he certainly is, and he's doing a good job at the moment in what is going to be 14th place. So uh, maybe if he can get himself up into 12th, he can have a double sixth place, maybe, that we could try and say at the moment. He's a double sixth place plus two, which is not quite what he would be wanting at this point in time but we still of course have this scrap going on from sixth place on backwards right now Hinzi looking behind there is Hanlon and Latter and Preston and Bowden they're all there and they're just thinking well this is the train I'm battling between now and the end of this race one position would be very nice 
Yes, yeah, certainly. And Preston seems to be the quicker driver apart from Thomas Hins in this little group here. So possibly going to see a move if he can hold on to his tyres for the time being. Not about four tenths slower was Latter, and then two tenths slower was Hanlon. So it's not a lot of time, but it will make a large difference in the end. It certainly will make a large difference. And of course, there's not many laps remaining here in this one. They've only got eight when they cross the start finish line next. So they will have to make sure that their battle is going to be pretty standard they go through Hobson and Taliancic they've closed right back up again Hobson closed two tenths that last time by and Brenton Hobson is now uh, I think he's heard oh he's falling away a little bit he's got the bit between his teeth and he is motoring yeah he's certainly starting to push on now is Hobbo with trying to catch up to well keep up with Taliancic and get on by but just doesn't quite seem to have the pace through the middle sector, but it seems to be really strong into the brakes and on the entry and the number of the corners. So, yeah, it's really going to be an interesting time for Hobbo once he gets close enough, and I'm sure he'll be able to get moved well and truly. Well, there's Corey Preston, and there is a move completed on Kenneth Latter, and that was a, I do not want anything to do with you, Corey. Go straight on by, my friend. So, there for what is Kenneth Latter is the gentleman's approach to racing. No fighting, no risk, and sometimes that gives you a reward. At the moment, it's given him a big reward at the moment in ninth place. Corey Preston, mind you, is your biggest mover and shaker in the field. Remember, he started dead last. He didn't set a qualifying time. Yes, he's had his shenanigans today, but he is up 20 places. Yeah, he's definitely done well to keep out of trouble and move up that many places as he has over the course of the race and avoid all the carnage that's gone on. So, yeah, really good driving by Preston here to be level-headed and manage to get through this race as well as, well as he has. Yeah, he's doing a sensational job at the moment and you cannot fault uh, him in terms of how he has been uh, clawing up through the order. I think Brian Borg's day is done. He's been down on pit road for four laps and he is pretty much at 45 degrees. He's at 10 o'clock down on pit road at the moment some would say here can because his car is pointing as if it's the 10 hand it certainly is a odd angle to see a car in pit lane but nevertheless he's managed to park it quite well has he at 10 o'clock so yeah props to the parking job there but looking like hobson's falling away a bit more from telling answers here yeah it certainly does look that way for the number eight against the number five and uh, sometimes those are the ebbs and those are the flows in these kinds of races. Right now, uh, I'm just looking at uh, Henri Michaela. He seems he's dropped a whole heap of time here over the course of this lap. I wonder if he's made a mistake. He has. He got contact with the recovering Ryan O'Sullivan down into turn number one. So got a tap, got turned and found the grass on the inside. So Ryan O'Sullivan won't be... Uh, best pleased with the way he made that move. Henri Michaela has dropped now all the way back behind Steve Yance, and that puts him in 20th. Yeah, big drop behind now for Marco Numela, and yeah, all sorts going on there. Yeah, all sorts going on there. That's the uh, other driver there, Henri Michaela, Marco Numela, at the moment in 11th position right now on an island on his own, but up 14 places of his own cam. It's been a great drive by Marco. Yeah, it certainly has, and I do want to apologise for that mistake, but nevertheless, it has been a certainly good drive from Nermola to just plot away like he has and actually give these guys a run for their money like Marco has. So, yeah, really, really good driving there. And I believe there's a mistake from Hanlon. Hanlon. Yeah, he's gone around, and that is down at the third chicane. How many times do we keep talking about it? Grass on the outside. Vehicle snaps on him, and he's trying to save it. He does, but look at how much this cost him. He's back behind Rob Bowden again. Oh, he's yeah, had he another one. Is. He did exactly the same thing down at La Pangle. He's trying too hard to maximize each corner. Yeah, those tires will be a little bit greasy and warm from that moment. Oh, well, this is P. Lee on screen as well here, Cam. Look at that. That is uh, probably a horse that needs to be put out to pasture and taken behind the shed. There's a blown engine, and that's pretty much taking it behind the shed. Yeah, that's certainly uh, it's off to the blue factory, unfortunately. So, yeah, not too ideal there. And uh, it does happen sometimes, unfortunately, with these engines. So, yeah, just have to be a little bit more careful next time on the downshifts. Well, you've got to be careful. Someone, look at this. Tom Freer is talking about being careful. Look at how much he gained that last time by nine tenths of a second. So something happened somewhere to Jordan Ross, maybe, that's caused him to drop a whole second of time. 
And looking at it, it seems like that has just been a case of Tom Freer has got the bit between the teeth. Look at this as they go through now. No worries at all at the moment from Jordan Ross, but Tom Freer is thinking, well, second place would be absolutely fantastic. Yeah, it'd be a great way to kick the season off with a second place and a solid haul of points. And Ross struggling for power down traction there, just sliding the rear, and that's really going to be blood to the nostrils of Tom Freer as he's really going to be enjoying seeing those tyres start to melt away on Ross's car. Yeah, and those tyres are going to be key. Remember, we know Jordan Ross pushes hard to begin with, but then the tyres fade off a little earlier. It's exactly what's happened. You can see how aggressive they are over the final curves. They have that licence to be, as now they know that Harley Haber, four seconds down the road, has kept that gap as such. They don't have to really look at that. They've got to look at everything else at the moment. Into turns one and two. Again, not quite doing here. But the more that Jordan Ross holds it up, I think he's got to try and hold up Tom Free and bring Brady Myers into play. He does. I don't think he quite has the tire life to try and hold it up Hanlon. Tom Freer, But Hanlon making a move. Yep, on Rob Bowden. Down the inside at turn one. All oh, close on the brakes now. I thought Bowden was going to run into the side of him there. But Hanlon has got the move done. He's back now into what is ninth place. Yeah, that's one position for Hanlon to have recovered. Now he's just going to get two more to get by Preston and Lasseter for the time being. But running out of laps, I don't think he's quite going to get those two back. No, I don't think he is, but we will see. There is time still, though, as uh, Tom Freer again looking very twitchy, though, coming out of the third K, but he has still got himself within range to pounce if he wants it, though, if he wants to dive, and oh, he's going to really close it up on the brakes, but nothing doing here through the right. Jordan Ross is blocking uh, very much in the middle of the apex, just going a couple K slower, trying to bring Myers back into the fight. Myers is slightly quicker that last time by as well compared to the two ahead. So these two fighting is really bringing Brady into this and Brady will really be liking this as podium is not out of reach, that's for sure. No, certainly not at this point as one lap down goes Adam Briggs as Harley Haber goes by and says four laps to go here at Circuit Gilles Villeneuve. They've only got 13.3 Ks left as they go through the left and the right to turn one, turn two in this battle. Second, third, and fourth. One will not get a podium. Someone may run into someone else. But there is, of course, that unknown factor that comes on through. And Brian Borg has got his car fixed. It's taken him eight laps. Yeah, it's taken quite a while to get that thing repaired at 10 o'clock angle. But nevertheless, he's back out and on track to try and recover something is Brian Borg, but not quite going to recover a lot of stuff as Hanlon's all over the back end of ladder now. Yeah, and Kenneth Latter's got to be careful right now about how he approaches this. He let through Corey Preston earlier. Looked like he was going to fight back and both maybe slightly clipping the outside wall there as they go through towards turn four. That's one of the cool things about this track is sometimes you go through a corner and there is literally no margin for error because there is a wall on the outside. And oh, a huge slide from Kenneth Latter. And there could be the chance for handling, but he's not close enough to get it down into the third chicane. Yeah, quite close enough. And a little bit of headlight flashing to try and distract Letter as well for good measure, but not quite going to be able to reel him in just yet. But move on the cards, possibly at the hip, and if we can get a good run here. Well, Marco Nermola could have one just behind here. He's looking down the inside, hoping to make a move. Does he make it down on the brakes? No, Rob Bowden very much had it covered, but he's gone a little too deep here. They've opened up side by side, touch each other ever so slightly, and now they continue that scrap. They continue that battle. Not quite close enough. Second, third, still battling. And look at what's dangerous in front of them. There is a battle in front of them. Yuan Ji Lin and Adam Briggs fighting for position. This is a big spanner in the works. Yeah, it certainly is. They probably didn't quite expect that traffic, but they're about to come up towards it. So, yeah, there's a bit of jostling that's going to be happening here. And hopefully no one gets held up because these three for second, third, and fourth are not going to want to get held up at all. But Brady's going to want to hope that the two here get held up, that's for sure. 
Well, they know that they are two and three seconds of lap slow. Yuan Lin has a big slide, and now here comes Briggsy, looking at maybe the inside if he wants to get this move done, but I'm not sure he's close enough. He does look to that inside, but again, has to only poke the nose at this point, and now the traffic is caught. It all depends on where it's caught, though, if they actually find it in the next section of track. They go on the long straight. That's the easy bit. But look at Tom Freer. He got a great run through here. I'm not sure he's too bothered about the traffic in front. He'll have to go the long way around, though, to get this move done. And Adam Briggs decides he bails out of it. Around the outside, Trimes Freer. And also, you can see there, one Mr. Brady Myers was trying to get in in the mix as well. Remember, they came together earlier on, did Freer and uh, Myers. So, uh, at the moment, Freer and Myers... Well, they could have some history, but Jordan Ross is just an orchestrator at the moment. He is a maestro at managing these drivers behind. Yeah, he's certainly doing a fantastic job at doing some defensive driving to try and hold on to a second position on what are probably well-used tyres at this point compared to the likes of Freya and Myers. But he's doing a fantastic job, like you said, but move incoming from Brady Myers at some point. Well, here comes Zach Hanlon as well. Remember, that this is the other Alters car. Trying to get by Kenneth Latt. He's going to leave it late. He does leave it late. Has he got it slowed up? No! Sideways! Round you go! And he's just about got it off the curve. So he's not a beached whale of sorts. But there's another position gone. There's one. Here comes two and three now going away. Another lot of positions are lost for Zach Hanlon, unfortunately, after some mistakes. But three has now got pressure from both angles, rear and front of Myers and Ross and he's really going to have his work cut out for him but he's all over the back end of Ross and got a solid run out of the chicane. Yeah he certainly has and you can see Jordan Ross is defending into this third chicane so at eight and nine it's not ideal but Jordan Ross is having to use every trick in the book to try and get himself a run through. Tom Freer fantastic run again we'll have to go the long way round again so try it again my friend around the outside but you can see how narrow jordan ross is can he slow it up yes he can oh brady give him a little bit of a tap and that might just be the respite he's been looking for they do fight behind because yuan Lin and adam briggs are back together again and briggs is side by side too but the white flag coming for harley haber he's only got one left but now freer in full defensive mode look at this brady myers has got a nose to the inside can he slow it up Freer's going to have to give him the room here, and he's going to have to give him the position. Brady Myers, what a move that is. Up into third. Jordan Ross might just be safe here on the white flag lap, which is being led by the United Esports car of Harley Haber, number six at the moment, who is looking like he is a driver of the future, and the future very well. Maybe now, look at Tom Freer, though. Comes back on the inside of turn two, and he's got the move done. Brady's let him have it. That's a brilliant move. Getting that one done. Tom Freer, yeah, Brady's absolutely from nowhere. I think Brady might have got a slowdown down at turn one. I think he was far too aggressive there, maybe, through that section. So Brady Myers may have just cost himself a podium just like and that at this point. There are no real battles going on down the order. You've got Brenton Hobson and Michael Taliancic trying to have a scrap at the moment. Hobson as close as ever, but for 13th place, who wants that unlucky number, really? Some questions may need to be asked about that again Tom Freer not really too fussed at the moment with Brady Myers behind he's three car lengths back plus which means that Myers is definitely not in a position to dive here at this hairpin but you have to look at one Harley Haver he affects every race that he enters he knows that he is a factor no matter where he starts no matter where he finished he got turn one uh, pretty much almost wrong but he gathered it up took the race lead and when carnage happened behind he walked to a three and a half second lead and never looked back through the final chicane big slide as well and harley haber will take the first round of this v8 supercar series and he does so at a canter jordan ross will come home second tom freer will make the podium with brady myers in fourth place and that you have to say has been some magical magical racing yeah, it certainly has great racing all the way through the field all night long, but a perfect race and a perfect start to the season for Harley Haber to do the performance that he's put on tonight. So, yeah, he'll be one to watch the whole season long, and if anything, he's going to probably be in the prime spot to take the title at the stage. Well, he's doing doughies and also drifts as well, so he's incredibly happy with that win. So uh, you can't blame him too much here. A lot of drivers in this field for this opening round here, Cam, are probably going to be looking at themselves and going, well, how on earth did that all go wrong? I think only three drivers had a perfect race. 
Yeah, there's certainly a lot of drivers who'll be scratching their head and sort of licking their wounds after ending up in with damage or ending up in the pileups that happened early on. So unfortunate for a number of drivers, but they'll be coming back in week two stronger and better than ever. They certainly will. The last driver to come across the line will be Ashley Ruskin, who is over a minute and a half behind at this point in time. So uh, that will be a shame for him, but he started 26th and he's in 21st position. So he'll be happy with a finish at the very least. Official classified results though, they are up on your screen right now. Harley Haber wins in 40 minutes and 24 seconds. His margin of victory, seven seconds come the end over Jordan Ross. Tom Freer able to get third, but was effectively robbed of a second place after contact with Brady Myers on the penultimate lap. Myers, though, had the move done, but a slowdown penalty cost him come the end. It's fourth overall. James Scott, what a recovery drive that's been from the reigning champion. He gets fifth place overall with Thomas Hins in sixth. Corey Preston sat at the very back, had a little scare, was uh, very not happy with the way that hit that move uh, caused contact earlier on, but he gets seventh place for his issues up. 21 is your biggest mover and shaker. Kenneth Latter in eighth. Marco Nirmala gets ninth position from 25th. And Zach Hanlin went forwards, backwards, did the hokey-cokey. He turned around and still got 10th place. Yeah, and just behind, outside the top 10 over the page, Kirsten Smart and Rob Bowden just outside there with a fantastic battle with Zach Hanlin and co. Michael Taliantzic in 13th and the Hobson 14th. Not quite able to get the job done in the end on Taliantzic, but he'll be happy with that recovery. Scott O'Keefe in 15th, followed by Ryan O'Sullivan in 16th. 17th to Greg Sharp and Craig Jones. 18th and he rounding out the top 20 will be Henry Michael and Steve Jansen. Ashley Ruskin, the last finisher on the leading lap. Three drivers finished uh, one or finished with laps down. One lap down was both Yuan Ji Lin, who held off Adam Briggs to the line. P. Lee, uh, the Mustang, very much exploded its engine. It was looking a sight for sore eyes. Brian Borg, who was pointed at 10 o'clock, uh, was able to get back going, but ultimately falls eight laps down come the end. And three more non-finishers include Wayne Burke, Sean Thompson, and Mitchell McLeod for Talk Inc. as well. So not the best ideal race for some, but what a race it was for other drivers. And Cam, this is a very, very big season, long season uh, that comes up. And what is crucial about this season as well is exactly where we will be going for next week, or in fact, for the entirety of these weeks. You can subscribe, of course, to the IRAC Esports Network for more issues, uh, for more races even, not necessarily more issues, uh, but for more races. But we are going to Sebring in one week's time as if we haven't had enough of that after a 12-hour race and a 90-minute IMSA race as well on the IRAC Esports Network. Sebring, it's bumpy, there is concrete, there is asphalt, and it is one of the best tracks Harley Haber has. Yeah, it certainly is. There's a lot of history with Sebring and Haber, so looking forward to it and probably going to be another strong result for Haber if he can stay out of carnage and have another perfect result like he had it tonight. Well, a massive thanks, of course. I have to go to those who get it done for us, especially to Motum Simulations, who are big with the replays here today. A big, big thank you to Jay Kennedy, who's been on the cameras for us. Of course, to Cam Dance, who's been on my left-hand side, and, of course, myself, Jake Sperry. Harley Haber, though, he starts the season as he means to go on. A big victory, a good track coming up for him that he goes very, very well at, and everybody knows that he is now the benchmark for this series. Catch him if you can. You may love him, you may hate him, but Harley Haber is standing tall. Fantastic. This is GT Racing right now. He's got tracks and he can't win the outside of both of them. Maloney! Oh, oh, he's, he's taking Anderson. Anderson's up to him. Oh, hand. my God. Oh, oh, my goodness. Half the field's going to get rolled. This is very close. These guys are going to want to make their way through the field very quickly. Oh, there we go. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's massive. This is it. This is over. I can't believe this. Oh, my oh, God. God, what?